Yay. Yeah, but I got glasses. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, it'll work. Hopefully. Yeah. <coughs> Alrighty, it's eleven thirty. Yay. Yeah, now we're green. We're good to go. Well, yeah, it's 11.30. That clock. <coughs> Yay. God. We've only got five people here. That's what I get for being here on a Sunday. <coughs> but I gave them the choice. Saturday or Sunday, it didn't matter to me. I could live with either one. It's a drive no matter what. But I'm glad to see that we're back in person. Uh, it, is, it is nice to being out and about again. Uh, this is the automating free IPA installation and configuration talk uh, that we've got going on. <coughs> Hopefully everyone's heard about free IPA. Uh, it has been out there fortunately for quite a while. As you can tell, I am Mike Ralph. I am a senior technical account manager for Red Hat. Um, this is not a Red Hat talk. This is, of course, this is the Southeast Linux Fest, um, but we will be using Fedora um, for my hosts, everything here. Um, what well, we're going to be discussing, uh, who am I? Why do I do this? Uh, the environment I'm using, the required packages for this, then we'll go through all the playbooks because I am using Ansible for all the autom automation. Uh, I've been using Ansible since 20, let's see, I've been Red Hat for three years, 17. Uh, I think right before Red Hat purchased them or right after uh, I started using Ansible. <coughs> uh, found out it is something that I enjoy quite a bit uh, compared to the last talk I was at that just Ansible was not worth it. They're not a... <laughs> It is not a developer uh, application. It's more of a sysadmin application uh, in my mind. Get this stupid thing working. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, I'll show the um, inventory files that I'm using, the, the roles, the whole playbook, and we will actually be doing a live demo. Uh, it should work. I've ran it enough. A little bit about me. Uh, I started with the Sinclair uh, ZX80 way back in the day when you had to plug things into the TV uh, using composite cables. Um, moved on to a Tandy 1000, uh, then fortunately got to start building my own machines. Um, been a sysadmin for over 20 years now. Um, yeah, as it says there, I don't know how it works. It just does. Um, at this point, I'm afraid to do anything with it. <coughs> I am a coffee lover, um, got back into it, got to travel up to Canada. Tim Hortons, oh my God, they put crack in their coffee. Um, it's the best thing out there, uh, better than Duncan and, and any of the stuff around here, and definitely not the burnt Starbucks. Um, got into, been laid off quite a few times, a couple times, during all the wonderful little downturns uh, in our industry. Got into information security, it is a hobby now. Uh, I do enjoy it, do love it. Um, <coughs> yeah. Wonderful matrix. Uh, yeah. What if I told you the cloud is just someone else's computer? It's not my friend. I don't like it. And the little wonderful red hat IBM logo I have here. Yeah, a little interesting fact. I was the last and first orientation at Red Hat. <coughs> We were told that we were actually purchased on my second day of orientation and had to go down to the Coliseum and listen to the whole speech with, you know, everyone there. Um, eh, I knew it was coming. No big deal. Uh, yeah, why do I do this? Oh, my God. Why do I spend, you know, hours writing a playbook to automate something that normally will take me three, four commands to, to run. I'm lazy um, I, in a good way. I don't like doing repetition stuff. Um, if I can write a playbook for something that I'm going to do, do a whole lot, 
I don't care how long it's going to take. I'll do it. Um, I am a technical account manager. For those that do not know what that is, um, we do it kind of different than other companies. I'm an advocate for you. I like to help you with everything you do. I test a lot of everything I do. My primary products, projects that I deal with, Satellite, Ansible, IDM, which is the uh, downstream version of free IPA, <coughs> along with all the Red Hat platform stuff. Um, so I build a lot of labs, um, not only for myself, testing for my customers as well. I'm in the public sector, so I do with all the security frameworks. Uh, FIPS is a big thing and one of my headaches with uh, a lot of the applications. So that's why I do this. Um, also, I'm decided I'm giving back to the community now, so I'm trying to do more talks. If you all see anything I need to change, please let me know. Whether it's a slide, my habits, how I deliver things, please let me know. Um, I'm up for criticism as long as it's constructive. Um, I do know I dress like a, a bum, so, but hey. Um, my environment, <coughs> it's very simple. Uh, it's three VMs. <coughs> Two of them are going to be your IPA servers, one's the client and actual Ansible host that I'll be running everything off of. The resources, it's, I run two vCPUs, four gigs of memory, 30 gigs of hard drive space. That's pretty much what I've been using for years. Um, it handles everything. Uh, my demo, yes. <coughs> um, to make life a little bit easier, I do already have the packages installed, Ansible, free IPA. Um, I didn't want to, you know, spend time pulling down packages off the web. So... That's what we've got here going. Yeah. I can turn that off. Uh, <coughs> as you can see here, three files and a roles directory. Um, Ansible config, which is of course needed for Ansible, my inventory file, and then of course my playbook, which calls a few roles. Uh, these, most of them are the configuration side of the house. Um, the actual installation is done through Ansible Dash Free IPA. It's a upstream uh, repository that's done by a few of our uh, developers. <coughs> so let's go ahead and kick this thing off. It will take, if everything goes right, about 20 minutes to run. So as we kick this supper, sucker off, <coughs> come on. What did I click wrong? There we go. Yep. And we'll go back through this here in a little bit. Let's get back to our slides. <coughs> As I mentioned, here's the required packages. It's I'm running uh, for the client slash actual host. I'm running Fedora Workstation. Uh, for the actual IPA servers, I decided to run Fedora Server. Uh, this is all f off of 36. You can run this all on the client. You can run them all off a server if you so desire. I decided to mix it up a little bit. On the servers, you only need uh, to install the, like I said, the free IPA server, free IPA server DNS packages. The actual uh, installation uh, applications, um, playbooks, will install this for you if you do not pull them down beforehand. <coughs> on the client, same thing for free IPA client. The install packages will pull it down. The only thing you do need to install, Ansible Core, Ansible Free IPA. It's all part of Fedora 36. There's n nothing additional you need to do except for install them. <coughs> Correct, just, just for the configuration server, just the, just the host, Ansible host that you're running it off of. Um, Technically nothing. The Ansible free IPA um, modules and playbooks uh, that you install, that calls everything you're going to need. So it will actually reach out to the client. It will verify, what do, you, do you have any of these packages installed? If not, let me install it. So it will go ahead and install the packages for you. I've just downloaded them, like I said, didn't know what the bandwidth is going to be like. Didn't want to waste the time on, you know, maybe a slow connection. <coughs> Next, we have our inventory host file. 
Um, I did break this up a little bit to make it easier to, to talk through at the beginning. I, I'm getting away from the I and I conf uh, format of Ansible and move to the YAML format. Uh, so this is why it does look a little bit different than what you might be used to. Um, I have my children. Oops, let me go back. No. There we go. Um, for the children, I have an IPA server group. You will always have one server in there. Um, this is the primary or what, I'm not sure what they're moving towards, but it's called the master server. Um, the only reason why it's called a master server, or in, in my words, uh, primary, is that it is the CA renewal master. Um, every install, no, I take it back, not every install. Um, but at least in this installation, I'm doing self-signed certs, so I need the CA master, uh, renewal master there. Then I have the replicas. Uh, you do see a couple of these are commented out. You can have as many replicas as you so desire. Um, I do advise being careful, <coughs> um, especially if you decide to use this playbook as an example. I have a CA being installed on these replicas. It is not there by default. Um, this is something that I'm having installed. <coughs> so, and you don't need that many, basically, sub, uh, well, other CA servers sitting out there. Uh, too many can, can cause performance issues. Free IPA is a meshed system, so they are always talking to each other, and CA is chatty. So please be careful on how many CA replicas you do um, install. Um, same thing with clients. You can have as many clients as you want. Since this is a demo, I only have one being installed. <coughs> um, the actual variables that I'm going to be using here, um, as you can tell, this is underneath the IPA server group, under host for the IPA example.com. <coughs> we need to know the domain. We need to know the realm. Um, set up DNS. I do want this to be a, net, a DNS server. You can use third-party DNS servers if you so desire. If you want to use a bind server sitting out there, you can do it. I've installed bind on the same server before and have had no issues with it. <coughs> I am creating a reverse zone. Um, you don't have to do this, but if you're using, um, I keep getting these wrong, uh, the 192, the 10, 172 range, I would advise doing a reverse zone <coughs> in this just from the fact that it sometimes does not pick it up. Um, all the other IPs, I haven't had an issue with it. So it's just become a habit. Um, since I'm using example.com, example.com is out there in the wild. So I am allowing <coughs> zone overlap. So it doesn't matter who owns it, I'm going to create it and all the machines that I connect up to it will know where it's at. Uh, I'm not doing any forwarders, so this is the primary DNS. Everything will come, talk to it, and it will uh, reach out and find the actual IPs for whatever names you're using. I'm not forwarding it off to Google or, or anything like that. <coughs> I've left the firewall D zone in here just out of habit. Um, I do know some companies that are security related do not want to use the default uh, firewall zone, so you have to put a name into it for it to actually add the firewall rules to it. If you're not running a firewall, no big deal. If you're using default zone, no big deal. This is just another habit. And since I've manually installed the packages already, I have the install packages to know. Um, the default for that one is yes, so you don't have to put it in there. <coughs> for the replicas, replicas is pretty much the exact same as the server, um, but you don't have to put in the realm or the domain or anything like that because that's getting pulled from the primary server. But I am setting up CA, so I have set up CA. I'm setting up a DNS. I want this to, to be another DNS server. Same thing with firewall D, um, install packages. <coughs> now, <coughs> Fedora is slightly different than RHEL. I don't know why, and I've raised the issue up to uh, some of the developers. Um, all IP addresses. I'm having it basically force um, 
the creation of any IP address I have into DNS on the primary server. Um, and I'm also having home directory made. So if I happen to log into this box using my IPA uh, login, it'll automatically create a home directory if it's not there. <coughs> clients are simple. Um, there's not much you need to do to it. The list of the clients you're going to have this uh, installed on, same thing with it. Make a home directory, all IPA addresses, and the install packages is no. Uh, <coughs> I have global variable files. Well, global variables I'm using in all my roles. Um, <coughs> some of this is based on if I'm going to, I don't know why you would with free IPA, but if you want to connect this to an AD server, there are certain things you're going to need. So I miss changing that. Um, I have the short name, which is basically what the realm is. Um, then I have the root domain, which is the whole thing. Name server in here is the primary name server, basically ipa.example.com. The reason I have this in here is the replicas and clients, normally you don't have pointing to a name server that doesn't exist. So you need to change that name server. All these machines need to know where your, I, your IPA server is at. So I've got this in here and I'm going to set it. Uh, you will need the IPA admin password and the IPA uh, DM password. This <coughs> IPA ad admin is your actual admin password for your IPA server. This is what you're going to use to log in uh, to the GUI. The IDM, I mean the IPA DM password is your directory manager. And as you can probably tell, I swap IPA and IDM around like crazy. They're pretty much the same product with a, a different wrapper on it. I have two passwords here because in part of this I am installing users. I'm creating users in the IPA. I do have one of them that's an admin password that's going to be an admin user. So I've separated them. I have the admin password and I have the user password, <coughs> which is used further down in one of the roles. Uh, for the users, I have myself, and then I have some what I call a sudo user. Um, this is actually goes a little bit further down with the group names. <coughs> I create a I will be creating a sudo role and I will be assigning these particular users to that sudo group which will then have access to that sudo role later on. I am creating a host group for all of my clients. And then of course like I said the group names I've got two groups the admin group and the users group uh, which the admin group is the IPA admins user group is sudo group because I ran into a thing, I made IPA users, and IPA users is an actual default group that everyone gets added to, so I was wondering why things were screwing up and my admin user was added to it. <coughs> um, the roles I did not break out, um, I, can, I will be showing those uh, just because there's just way too many of them and I don't want to kill you by slides. Um, I'd rather get some hands-on stuff. <coughs> Uh, the IPA uh, con name, Fedora is weird, uh, workstation in particular. <coughs> it uses a connection name, Wired, under, uh, Wired Connection 1, I think it is, or Wireless Connection 1. You have those names in there. Unfortunately, I'm trying to make this as simple as easy, <coughs> simple as possible. Um, I want everything to be what the actual nickname is, uh, well, Nick name is, which is ESP10P or whatever it is. Uh, I've never gotten used to that. <coughs> so servers have whatever the Nick is called as a connection name, Sir, uh, workstation does not. So to change the DNS where everything's being pointed to, I need to change that name on the workstation first. So that's why that role is in there. Uh, <coughs> since everything's in alphabetical order, I got the IPA groups where I'm creating the user groups. Next is the HVAC rules, host base access, access control. I'm creating the services for it and the groups. I'm adding the services to the group. Yeah, this goes a long way around to get to what you need to do. Um, so, the joy of it. Um, I create a rule on who can use this group. I create the rule for 
And I'm actually creating a rule to allow admins all access, full access to all the machines so they can run whatever they want to, whereas the pseudo group is just doing whatever pseudo rules I create for them. And then I'm disabling the default allow all. Um, so someone can log into a machine and not have full access to everything. Creating a host group for the client servers. Uh, I'm changing the name server, <coughs> which goes back to that con name. Adding in the primary IP, uh, IP server for it. PTR, basically this allows for your forward records to sync with your reverse records. So when I create a forward record for my client, it's automatically going to create the reverse record. That is not in there by default no matter how you install it, whether it's through this or through um, manual, manual methods through the CLI. <coughs> Then I have the sudo, which adds uh, commands to a uh, possible use list, commands that you can use. Um, I create the group for it. And then of course, I add the commands to the group and who can run it. So what uh, group name, user group, in this case, sudo group. Um, I add all the users. Um, there's two sections in here. I can probably clean it up a little bit more and make it one with a loop. But I've done it differently, you'll see. Um, and then the sudo sssd. <coughs> this adds, this runs auth config on the Fedora machine so that it will use the IPA sudo group and all of its information along with the local sudo commands. Um, my playbook, wonderful playbook. Um, we start off, like I said, we're changing the connection name for the Fedora workstations. It's run across to everything because I have not found how to actually differentiate Fedora workstations from Fedora Circer, uh, server. Um, so you'll see a couple fails in there when we go through and, and look at the uh, playback of <coughs> the actual installation. Next, I'm changing the name server for the IPA replicas and clients. Um, of course, we don't want to change this for uh, the primary server because it hasn't been installed yet. Um, that's why we have the hosts all and then uh, exclamation IPA server. I'm becoming true for everything uh, pretty much so that I am a root user. I am running this off my local account. <coughs> Finally we come to the actual installation. Um, this is where Ansible free IPA RPM comes into play. This installs the roles, the playbooks, the modules, everything that's needed to uh, actually do all of this outside of Ansible. <coughs> uh, Ansible dash server, if, like I said, if you do not have the packages already installed, it will go down, pull the packages down for you, and it will go through actually do the installation, set up the CA, NTP, anything else you happen to pull into this. I did not go in depth with all the possible options for it, just the standard uh, DNS and, and stuff. <coughs> Next I'm running the PTR role. Like I said, I want to be able to to sync my forward and reverse records because it's just best practice to have reverse records. Um, next will come the IPA replica installations and then the client installations. The biggest time consumer is the I, um, excuse me the server and the replica installs. Um, especially when you do the CA. The CA takes forever to actually uh, do its installation. <coughs> Next we come down to the actual configuration portion of the, the, of the playbook. I'm creating the users. <coughs> I'm not gathering facts with all of these um, because if anyone knows Ansible, the facts are already there. Um, I'm creating the admin group which actually the user group's in there too. Like I said, I've made some changes to this uh, even up to this morning. Then I'm go going to uh, create the group roles, the host group, HBAC rules, sudo on the clients, and then the actual sudo uh, rules themselves. Yay, end of demo. What do we have here anyways? Are we still running? Yes, we are done. Hallelujah. <coughs> like I said, we'll go back through here and, and look at some of these. Um, as I mentioned, here's the fails uh, because the workstation name 
uh, the I mean the war the connection name is not there uh, on either the IPA or the replica machines because uh, they are works uh, they are server um, unknown connection wired connection one uh, change con name restart the interface because you need to bring it back up gathering the information <coughs> change the name servers on the replicas clients you can see here it's changed and then I do the installation for the IPA server and all of its wonderful things then we get down to where is replica now I start the replica client blah 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 and all the configuration stuff nothing's failed or at least nothing that wasn't allowed to fail failed um, and we can see here yeah 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 that's what I get for doing a live de live demo oh we have our IPA server running and we can actually log into this thing IPA dot Yay, that's actually not what I'm looking for. Delete. Now that's what I'm looking for. <coughs> As you can probably tell, the name of my machines are different somewhat. Actually, no, I didn't show the host names. Ah. Um, there is an issue with free IPA right now. You can't use subdomains. Um, it fails. I finally got the developer to find that bug Friday. Um, so you have to basically use a uh, second tier domain name, in this case, example.com. I was going to have self.example.com and was going to put a Windows machine out there as well under example.com. But because of the bug, I could not do it. <coughs> uh, yeah come on whoa how's that better yeah yeah it is um, <coughs> when you first log in what you come up to is users your active users as you can see here I have admin which is a default administrator login it's the one I used to log in then I have four usernames uh, Angie Duncan Mike and Sam Sammy uh, they're all enabled. They all have UIDs. We all have um, email addresses. Didn't put anything in staged. No preserved users. Um, you can create staged users just like you do active users. Staged users just mean they don't have a password. They don't have a UID yet. Um, they don't have GIDs or anything else. So it's just someone that is, let's say they're going to start at your company, but they haven't started yet. You can go ahead and stage them now using an Ansible playbook to create the user if you so desire or if it's one user by hand <coughs> and then activate them and they'll become an active user. Uh, preserved users is there. Some people require if someone leaves a company that you still keep the, their record that's preserved. Um, we have our hosts, we have the client, IPA and Replica. Um, services that's all th anything that's resolved with IPA um, our groups our user group admins is default editors is a default IPA users like I said ran into that one that's a default and trusted admins um, the pseudo group and IPA admins there are ones that I've created I am the only admin um, if we step back and we look at pseudo group we have our three users that was created and then of course IPA users is everyone that you've ever created <coughs> um, back to groups host groups I have two of them of course IPA servers is a default uh, group IPA and the replica sitting there and then the IPA clients which is my client machine you can have multiple groups for multiple reasons uh, different HVAC rules um, different pseudo rules stuff like that you can use with that <coughs> um, ID views auto member subordinates other things that I'm not getting into because um, I haven't actually delved into those 
too much. Um, auto members is basically you have a certain uh, basically regex that you go against and it'll automatically put people in groups instead of you having to uh, manually put them in groups like we did here. Um, policies where everything else, most of your other things are at, HVAC control, sudo, um, if you're using Kerberos, Kerberos ticket policy, password policies, SE Linux user maps, which is, I've never messed with that one. But uh, we have our rules here. Uh, as you can tell, allow all has been disabled. This is the default rule that allows anyone to log in. Um, and I think the system D user is a new one as well. <coughs> um, yeah. Allow PAM system D to run user at dot service to create system user sessions. Okay. That has been updated. Um, the web services rule is one I created in the admin access rule. Um, admin access, user group. I specify the users. I've got our admins. Uh, well, uh, nothing else because I'm allowing any host, any service. If we go back to our web services rule and we look at it. I did not change this one. Uh, this should be pseudo group. Yay. See, magic, it actually popped up. Um, so pseudo group is <coughs> who can run this? It can be run only on, they can only log into the IPA clients and they can only use the web services service group. Which we then, all the services that are available, you can add services, these are just the default ones. I think most of them are the default ones I created, a couple I believe. Yeah, web services, one I created. Um, but most of these are default. You can create whatever you want someone to use. So if you've got a third party application you want someone to use, and just that application, you can add this here for them. Um, service group, like it says, it's a group of all the services that this person's allowed to use or these people are allowed to use. Sudo, FTP, web services, which is one of the ones I created. Um, sudo rules, my archive rule. You've probably seen these a lot of times. What commands are allowed to do sudo with? Less, unzip, zip, and command groups, archive group. Uh, As far as sudo, it's who can sudo that command? Well, for sudo, yeah. um, okay, for the HBAC services. Um, what's, what services they can actually start up, stop, restart? Um, yeah, these are all the, the services. Um, I am still kind of confused with the sudo stuff um, as a service, which is kind of odd. Um, because I've never gotten a straight answer. Uh, did nothing with network services except for add the zones, reverse, forward, all the records that go with it. Um, as you can tell, IPA and the rep both have all their records along with all the records used to access them or find them. Probably be the best word for it. And of course, the reverse records. 22, 23, and 29 form. Um, made no changes here, but you can change um, add roles. You can also configure things if you want to change uh, the default configuration for users um, or new users, actually. You can go ahead and make these changes. If you decide to do this first, go ahead and do it before you create the users um, <coughs> so that the users you create will have your new rules. Let's take a look at some of these roles. Um, um, yeah. There we go. Uh, connection name, like I said, it's it's wired connection one. Changing the connection name. One of. Um, So I'm changing it to whatever the alias name, the alias is. Alias for this was 
what do we have for since I keep forgetting it um, ENP1 S0 uh, that is what Ansible sees as its alias name Ansible for whatever reason uh, when it's gathering facts it does not gather the connection name that's why this change is made here it's an Ansible limitation uh, I think I'm gonna put an RFE and see if they can do something about that and then I up the alias name uh, we'll go to name server since that is actually the next one to do and here we go <coughs> there there is a role out there Linux roles can't remember the name of it um, Linux system roles there we go had to think back to the real stuff that is supposed to be able to do things within certain modules certain certain services firewall D networking but for whatever reason I could not get the network uh, module of the system Linux roles to actually work and do this the rail system roles which is based off of the Linux system roles does do this properly for whatever reason this does not but this is actually less code to actually put in uh, it just as a connection mod change the IP DNS IPv4 DNS and ups it uh, PTR. PTR is using one of the free IPA modules, uh, IPA DNS zone. Actually, I think all the other modules are using free IPA modules. Uh, IPA DNS zone is changing the zone. <coughs> I do have to supply the IPA admin password, as we can see. I'm allowing sync, dynamic update, present. Um, and I'm doing that for the forward and reverse zones. Yeah, the IPA server domain example.com reverse zone 10.168.192 dash in dash adder. Um, and I users, like I said, this is one that I can probably slim down and do a, uh, a loop at the end of this uh, end of the first one to create the users it's pulling in it's pulling in the variables from the inventory file for the users um, you can also do um, the password in there as well if you want to create uh, generate passwords for people um, instead of just giving them a single one like I did I was lazy um, same thing for the admin user. Uh, let's do groups. Here I'm creating the two groups and adding the users to them. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a single step uh, thing. First, I have to create the group, and then I go through and I add the members to the group. Same thing for the users. Like I said, I could probably do this with uh, variables and do it much less, but I'm slowly moving things to a more compact uh, playbook and role. So it'll eventually get there. Yeah. The playbook I'm using is one I've written. The modules and stuff, like you see here, the IPA groups, that's something I pulled, I pulled together. Um, this is, oh, I don't have it up. Oh, there's my, that's fine. Ansible, free IPA. Um, <coughs> upstream, on GitHub, of course, Red Hat's 
pull the downstream in. It's basically the same thing. The wording, the whole nine yards is the same thing that Red Hat has on their site, whether it's the Ansible site um, or the console.redhat.com, which they've created. Um, one thing to be aware of, um, <clears throat> Ansible Galaxy, from what Red Hat has done with Ansible now, with the move from the engine to core, um, they've started separating all the modules from a Red Hat supported and a community based supported. Um, some of the Red Hat support stuff is still on Ansible Galaxy, um, and they are IPA and then a name. Anything with IPA underscore and the name is community driven, community supported. Um, so we'll see here under. Uh, yeah, I'll pop it up here in a minute. Where are you? Yeah, here we go. Um, make it a little bit larger. Um, <coughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's anything with the IPA module name, and it pretty much aligns exactly into whatever the actual, if you've ever done the, the manual install of free IPA, it's the exact same option names that are available in, in both. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and you will see here a lot of these, like sudo SSD. I've got command. Um, some things just work better with command than just the module, I think. Um, and this is just running auth select enabling with sudo for your clients and then restarting SSSD. So <coughs> this really is automation made easy. Um, Ansible, from the last talk that I listened to, it's not a developer tool per se. It is a sysadmin tool for the most part. Um, we just want stuff to install and, and run. Um, how it works, I honestly don't care. Um, I'm not going to write a module Python module for this. Uh, my Python skills were never that great when I used it a lot. Um, so I'll take whatever someone's going to write for me and, and put it in there. So do you have questions, concerns, comments? Because we are about a quarter till the end of this and I know the food trucks are out there. So it's going well. Let's put it like this. The food truck should be out there because lunch is next which is a great time to put me because I usually talk fast and run through things quickly. Um, questions, comments, concerns? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, if, if this was something more than a demo, uh, a flat file with all the users in there and everything, it, that's the way to go. Um, putting, you know, let's say 100 users into an inventory file, yeah, no, um, that that's a nightmare because the, the, the users you're going to get from HR or from a manager and you can just, you know, if, you, if you're rolling this out for the first time, yeah concatenate them all, f make sure the format's right, put whatever, you know, names you need to in there. Uh, if you're also adding, you know, let's say phone numbers and passwords and, and everything else, that's, yeah, that's the best way to go for it. Going once, going twice, lunchtime! <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Um, this is actually... If anyone's interested, um, I do actually have it out on GitHub. Um, 
Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, mralph dash rh is my user out there. Um, first initial, last name. I've got a couple of things out there that I've put, uh, thrown out there. Um, an IDM, one that's, you know, the rail side of things. Uh, a demo lab for it and this. I'll be putting some more stuff out there. I want to do a little bit more with um, getting more of a whole lab type situation built where I can just run it and, and walk away because that was one of my big problems is if you're doing the install, you install it on the server, you turn around, you get busy doing something else, and then it's like, oh, it's done, like an hour later, like, oh my god, I forgot about this. Let me install a replica. Let me then come back and do a client, and yeah, the nightmare.